that you time. Can. Please do it. Let's, Let's do it. fall in love. Let's fall in love. <laughs> Morning. Hiya. Chin chin. How are you? Are you all right? Mm. Jolly good. Shall I, shall I see who's in? Who's in? Let's have a look at who's in. Oh God, there's loads of people in. There's no. Why isn't anybody at church? Good morning, two. And are you ready for this, Lex? Lex, are you sitting? You're sitting, aren't you? First in at nine forty-four, Laura Eccleston Siebel. Second in, also nine forty-four, Auntie Sue. Ah, shut the front door. It's morning. It's, it's yeah. <laughs> Maybe she's been up all night. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe she's been like clubbing. Also, yeah. Di Sullivan, Gillian Holbrook, Jason Entwistle, Anya Double Karma, uh, blah, blah, blah. Craig Monocle, also in early. Did not have a heavy Saturday night, apparently, Craig. Uh, Cassie's there. And Lisa Louise and Lisa Merriman, two Lisas in. Ooh. And Elise. Uh, you can have Elise for Elisa if you want. I'll, I'll let yeah, your releases yeah. for the Lisas. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, although, if, if I don't get some Claire soon, I'll take her back. Um, no, you got Cassie, you got Antoinette, Daily, Victoria Foley, uh, Kay Gilson, where are our Claire's? Jack Parrish, Bargains Mad Ben. I can't get that out in one go. Bargains Mad Ben. Bargain, 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 oh, bargain. Mar Margins, Margins, Men Bad Best Men. Yeah. Janine Powell and Caroline Nolan, who is watching back later because her son and daughter in law are having their scan of twins at 9 30. Exciting. Gender reveal. Um, it's a baby, it's two, it's two babies. babies. <laughs> Who else is in Deb Hughes, Rebecca Turner? Uh, I haven't got any Claire's. There better be some Claire's yeah, somewhere. Don't they're, they're, they're coming, they're coming. Don't worry, yeah. Luby Lou, Heather Tinkler, Catherine Lamar, that's Katie, uh, Welsh Wonder Nia, Hannah Williams, Laurel D. Where's me Claire's? Kirsten, hi, Kirsten, hi, Joanne hello. Cockrell, Lee. I've got no clothes. I'm starting to get a bit worried that the Lisas might actually kick our heads in. Oh, it's gone off in my hand. It's gone. It's gone. Okay, we'll go back up. Uh, Shirley Richardson, Lisa J. There's another Lisa for you. Lolly France, Bumblebee, Jeanette, Record Rat UK, Elaine D, Jane Curry, Claire James. Got Claire. Yeah, uh, Lisa Marshall, another Lisa for you. Kath E, Chris H, jo D D D Dodo, Dodo Dixon, uh, Living the Dream, Faces Denver, Under Files, Diane Brinklow. Jack saying, are they muted for everyone else? If if nobody can hear us, tell, them, tell me now. Ms. Q says, I'm in, and this is my church. Jack's <laughs> no, just said, I had YouTube on mute. Like, Oops, a daisy, Jack. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> um, Claire James, I hope you are feeling tough, because you seem to be the only Claire, and there's about six Lisas so yeah. far. Yeah, and, so, and yeah. They're, they're really hard. If today is the day that it all goes off, Claire, you've got to hold the fort for everybody. Pearl Cassie Smith says hi from all. Sorry, huh? sorry. Um, Cassie just says she's going to join the Claire's. I think we might need you, Cassie. I think we might have to start recruiting other people beginning with C. Yeah. Babs at the attics there. Karen Ball's waiting for a poached eggs on toast. I hope you're not waiting for me, for me, love, because I'm not cooking today. Janet Foxon. Who else is in? Diane Scott. If I've missed you and it matters, type in big letters in the chat. You missed me. Oh, there's Claire Plant. Claire Plant. Oh, Claire Yay. Plant. See? <laughs> Jane says happy Easter. Really hard happy work. egg day to those of you who are not religious and happy Easter to those of you who are. I feel like I've covered all the bases. Happy, happy spring mus. Happy spring mus. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sylvia. Dorothy says, can we have people beginning with D? If we ever get together again, I reckon we should have a massive game of British Bulldog, but separate everybody up into like initial the initials of their names. Do you remember British Bulldog? Yeah, it got banned from we got banned from every school, didn't <laughs> it? Got we? banned from all the schools because because people that, were dying. <laughs> yeah, got banned, and so did Kiss Cuddle Torture because um, I don't know. I think I think maybe like all all of the that kids might have been just you, Lex. Kiss Cuddle Torture. I remember Kiss oh. Chase, but I don't remember any torture, and I think that might be just for you. Oh. Yeah, that might just be a description of my sex life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Lainey's in. Hi, Lainey. Yes. Um, um, Lain Lainey, how many days out of hospital now? Like I said, she, she needs like a counter in the background of her. Like, you know. <laughs> 
breaking all previous records. Laney has now yeah, been exactly. up for four hours. Three, three days since last hospital visit. Like, well done. That's a record. Morning, Claire Borden. I didn't miss Claire James, Anya. She was the Claire I was talking to first. Um, I, I did miss Mama Tins. Hi, Yvonne Lee. Cassie says, can we wear knuckle busters? Is that like similar knuckle to knuckle dusters, only, only a bit more booby? <laughs> knuckle busters. <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. See so, Catherine, so you and Catherine obviously went to the same school. Yeah. And thing is, right, this wasn't even like comp or anything. This was infant school. So we were like four years old and stuff and playing playing Kiss Cuddle Torture. Like, <laughs> <laughs> morning tasty and lynn and gainer and jackie fun stuff people are wandering in now and tina line lady says it's been three days since my last day at hospital she said you know <laughs> you know like when you stand up in one of those support groups and go my name is laney and yeah. it's been three days since my last hospital day. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> well done laney but that's oh. enough now okay you know thank you and you're having a brian fail a Brian fail, yeah. My Brian don't work very well either most of the time. Well, you should let him out from under the table. Ben says, I've been waiting an hour for this and I'm not sure if I can stay awake any longer as I've been up since seven. Yeah, yeah since seven yesterday. But I thought I'd come on and say hello and happy get fat day, or I think you call it Easter. <laughs> no, honestly, happy happy fat day to you too. And go go to bed. We're yeah, really go, to, go to bed, Ben. Good night. To, to, you know, lose sleep over. Like, seriously. <laughs> Jack says you'd suit a mullet. Yeah, I think so. I think I'd suit a mullet. However, not going to do it because it's you know, in the front, party in the back. Yeah, and and just no. no. <laughs> but thank you. Yes. Cassie says it reminds me of my son. He used to play rugby for the county, but they checked him for gum shot as he used to bite in the scrum. How did you bring your children up, Cassie? <laughs> right, get in there and rip his fucking leg off. <laughs> I want to go to Diving Debs. Absolutely not ignoring you. Didn't even see you there, love. Didn't even see you. <laughs> oh, there it is. Look, it's her birthday and she's eating chocolate for breakfast. Yay, nice one. Well, so why not? I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, double reason, I suppose. I mean, I don't I do not do anything for Easter. Never really have. Um, just No, I buy the kids an egg each, but... um. I don't. You know, we've never we've never even really done that. Like, um, I know I've always just thought um, that Easter is actually like the religious one, isn't it? You know, Easter's the big one, isn't it? I mean, they celebrate yeah. his birthday, but they celebrate the day that he sacrificed himself to save him a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So that that's like so it's like like you know, good for you if you want, but you know, also chocolate and eggs are also good. It's not the day he sacrificed himself to save him. It's the day he rose again. It's his basically his again. birthday mark two. Yes. His birthday the sequel. Uh, good point, actually. Why don't we get proper presents then? Yeah. <laughs> God. Dorothy says, I'm the only one who doesn't like real chocolate. Give me a sausage roll any day. Um, Sausage roll eggs. Oh, sausage, sausage egg, egg roll. That's no, yeah. That's basically I think, a Scotch egg. I think, yeah, I think you're descri describing a Scotch egg, yeah. Happy yeah. Scotch egg day. There we go. <laughs> you like a Scotch egg. This was Lainey's channel last night, actually, like on her chat, was, mm. was basically just like, so what foods do you like? Well, I like these foods. I like all of these foods. And then everyone goes, God, I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to watch Lainey's live last night from my bed, but it would not load. It just gave me a blank, a black screen every time. So oh, I plainly am, I practice banned me. Yeah, probably. Rocked me completely. Yeah. Mm. Hi, Nikki. Karen says you're looking very well, Lex. I am feeling very well. Um, it's five weeks, isn't it? And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the five weeks since the op have gone really quick, and yet the five weeks before the op were about ten years long. Well, I, I think it actually was, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I sometimes, sometimes I even manage to forget about it. Um. So it's getting to that point of like, oh yeah, that was the thing that happened, rather than that's the thing that I'm recovering from. You yeah, know? rather than still experiencing it. Yeah, I do get the odd uh, reminder, but it's not like, um, you know, like oh, it's more like oh yeah, <laughs> good. So yeah, good. And and I was I have been ever since I 
I've done this, obviously on my recommenders on YouTube, it comes up with other people's hysterectomy stories. And then, so I was watching one this morning of like someone um, six weeks in and she was like, oh yeah, and I've got this yeast infection and then I've got this other infection and I'm so bleeding from here. And I'm like, bloody hell, I was lucky. Mm. Like some people have had it really shite, you know? So it's like, whew, you know. <laughs> No, she reckons it says she reckons it's a default setting because it couldn't understand why I was awake at that time of night. Probably, <laughs> yeah. It's like no, yo, no, no. Black screen, go to bed. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I'm awake now, if I'm honest. Two weeks to car boot. However, um, you know, I was excited to go to Bessemer Road on Sunday the 18th. Yes. The owner of the site has gone and bloody sold it, so that's it. There's, there's. Oh, no, uh, that was your good one, wasn't it? Well, no, Bessemer's like the my third choice, I suppose. Oh, okay. Which is the really good one? The oh, well, the really, really good one. If it's actually no, Bessemer's my fourth choice. The really, really good one. It goes Sully first, but that Sully, Sully is like it has to be a really good few days running up because it's in a field. It's in massive field. Um, so that one first, then Riola, which is basically indoors in like aircraft hangar or something ridiculous. So that that's a good one, and that's all on all the time. Um, and then uh, Gethy Gear, which is the one that Edward likes going to, and um, Joni Joan, she's in as well, and then Bessemer. So yeah, but excited. Cassie's asking if you've been to Chirk. Chirk is that a real word? Is that a real place? Never heard of it. That's she said thing. it's huge. No, never heard of that one. I'm going to look it up now. Sure. Morning, Fandria. She says she's at work, so keep the noise down. Sorry. 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 <laughs> it's in Wales. Where's Wales? I've never heard of that. I know where some things are in Wales. I know where the train station is in Bridgend. It's in Wrexham. It's in Wrexham. Oh, that's far too near Andrew. Andrew won't allow it. Andrew will not allow other resellers to visit his car boot sales. It's fine. I really don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where Rex. Uh, Wrexham's up Wales, isn't it? Wales yeah. top. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Nia lives in Chirk and it's a big, big car boot. Maybe we should go and car boot crash. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I haven't. Our Maybe our 2021 mission should be to piss all the other resellers off by crashing all of their car boot sales. Managed to piss a load of resellers off anyway. It's oh. a lot closer to Manchester than it is to Bristol. Let's put it that way. It's a long way. <laughs> for a long way that's for a car probably, boot. That's probably Becca Bamba style then. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so a long way just to go to annoy people. Yeah. I have been to North Wales once i think but i went the other side of north wales so i went in pig's fringe you know shape of wales pig's fringe and i went to um actually no i've been twice i think but i went to port myrian which is very cool so yeah i like port myrian have you just described wales as being the shape of a pig yeah it's the shape of a pig's head i live in the chin so it is <gasps> have you not seen that before because I just never have. I've always seen the little bloke pointing at the sea. Oh my! No, it's a pig. It's blatantly a pig's head. Can you see the bloke pointing at the sea? Well, no, no, because you can't. Got of... a hat on. Oh yeah, I suppose like a fisherman. Yeah, that's what yeah. I've always seen when I've looked at the map. Is that bloke going? Look, there's the sea there. This island over there. Yeah, I've never seen the pig. I can. I can. I'm not going to unsee the pig now. Pig's head, blatantly a pig's head. Yeah, yeah, can't unsee that now. I was describing um, Norwich to my mum the other day and saying, you know, it's in the bum, and she was like, "What are you talking about?" I was like, "It's in the bum." And she was like, "What are you on about?" I was like, "The country, the bum of the country," and she was like, "You just been." I was like, "No, the country has a bum here. Look, and Norwich is in the bum. It's in the bustle." Now you see where where I what I see. Unfortunately, is still Rolf Harris. Drawing Rolf Aru in the shape of the British Isle, <laughs> the koala next to him. Yeah. So that is like the knee of the kangaroo, isn't it? Yeah. So unfortunately, still Rolf. Chris is says everyone's googling Wales now. <laughs> it's a place next to England. 
In fact, in French, we are called Pays du Gal, which just means next to England. So we don't even have like a proper name. We're just next to England. Rude. Well, you, you've never really contributed much, have you, generally? Fuck off, Celts! Well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, nobody goes, oh, yeah, Wales, the home of... Ah. Hmm. The land well, of song. It's nice, it's next to England. <laughs> Castles. We you didn't start castles. You're not. You're not. The, you're not the home of. You don't. You don't begin castles. We what have two hundred and six castles in Wales. How many have you got? Eh, bring it on. How many? Because we knocked them down because they all got a bit old and drafty, and you're still living in yours. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> leaks. Catherine's saying home of leaks. Kathy's saying home of sheep. Steph's going rugby. Jilly's going Tom Jones. Welsh. <laughs> Welsh cakes. Welsh cakes. <laughs> Natalie's screaming cardigans from her bedroom. Surely cardigans come from cardigan, and I don't know where cardigan is. Cardigans in Wales, but... Oh, well, there we go, then. But... Oh, Sue's, Sue's made a very good point. Is he Welsh? Very... I, don't, I don't know, but if he is, then I'll forgive Wales for, for everything. Is he Welsh? That would be a bit. Never heard of him being Welsh. He is a Welsh actor. He was born wow. in Cardiff. Really? Yeah. He's one of yours. Okay. And what, love? Well, there you go then. Taste. You're welcome. Let's go. Not, not screaming taste. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's uh, Taste is from Newport. Who's Taste? What? From uh, RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Oh, okay. Kim's telling you to take care of still. Remember, you had a big op. Have yeah. you been overdoing it? I haven't been running any marathons or anything. Not recently. How many marathons have you run in your life, Lex? Um, approximately. It's not more than 10, is it? Mm. No, I've done less than 10 marathons as well. Yeah. yeah way less than 10, actually. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Shirley Bassey is Welsh. Yeah. Yeah, to be fair, I have, I have not yet completed my third marathon. Or started. No, I haven't started my third marathon either. No, this is true. Yeah. But it's okay. I mean, I think in a lifetime I probably completed one, but I had to walk it. Obviously, it couldn't run. Can't run. I would be willing to bet that in a lifetime I still haven't yet completed my first marathon. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I have. Morning, Heather. Hi, Heather. Yeah, see, All lots the Welsh of people now are literally flooding the chat with good Welsh things. <laughs> yeah, lots of decent things have come from Wales. But just remember also that uh, that when Vikings invaded, everyone in England dispersed to these places. And so you English aren't actually English. You know that, yeah? Talking to someone with the surname Jenkins. Well, yeah, that's true. Okay. <laughs> and... I am Oliver, which is Nordic, so I am a Viking. I am an invader. That explains the hair. Yeah, exactly. I well, because it was in a it was in a helmet. Mm. Yeah. And Mum's a, a descendant of Bodicea. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that Mummy was Bodicea reincarnated. To be honest, I can see her charioting around the place. We can have it. Yeah. No, she she's going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can I can literally envisage Mummy wreaking havoc in a chariot. Any day of the week. I think she's Joan of Arc. No. No. She was, she was fancy doing that at age 17 or wherever she was. Joan of Arc was a bit um, Greta thunberg -ish. She was a bit sort of the Greta Thunberg of her era, wasn't she? <laughs> bit whingy. Bit of a whingy teenager. Shut up. But how dare you? Yeah. Just that, you know, we've, we've learned not to set fire to people. Miss of Arc. In it. <sighs> yes, please. DBG says, I researched my ancestry. My maiden name is from Normandy, descends from King Rollo, who invaded France and was given land by King Charles III. So, so um, 
uh, are so are you royal and do you are you landed no i i mean landed as in like not like landed with that i mean like are you landed as in the landed gentry yes Mouse Garcia says, are we sisters? No, Lex is my mum. Yes. As we went to tell that lady at the charity shop, but she's oh, she told us. Yeah. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was a good day. Are you mother and daughter? It depends which way round you think it is. Well, I think she's your mum. Yes, yes, she is. Rude. <laughs> like really died away, obviously, because there's only like five years between us, but still, rude. and in the other direction as well. I'm five. I'm five years older than you, and yet, <laughs> and yet, you were the one who looked like my mum. You must have just been having a bit of a bad day. I was having a bad day. I think I was probably hungover. You know. <laughs> oh dear. So there you go. Leanne's also a Viking. See? We suit horns. Mm -hmm. Morning, Andrea. We do. What do you say? I said morning to the Andrea Hills. The Andrea the Hills is in. She said happy Easter. She said happy Easter back. They went on a jumble trail. I know. Not jealous. Ow. Is there going to be a haul, Andrea, in tonight's live? Because if so, I might manage to stay awake for it. They, they will be. I reckon there will be uh, a distance. To, oh, oh, Andrea, are you still doing the we're keeping it in the car until next week thing? Like, because now we wait, and now we wait for Andrea to reply. <laughs> then it might not be tonight. It might be for next week. Yeah. And in which case, it'll be the day before. We're all allowed back into shops, so then it'll be extra like ah, ah, it's tomorrow. Ah. I am trying to gently remind myself that last time they said all the shops could open, they didn't all open. Yeah. I'm trying not to get myself too psyched up and excited because I went last time I was like, right, and then I was like, they're actually fucking not, they're not open at all. So I'm hoping they will be this time, but I'm trying not to not to build myself up for a disappointment in case they're not. Well, I've been following the like obviously Emmaus and then there's that new charity shop that's opening in town um yay cool um <laughs> and uh and they both said uh well Emmaus says that they're not open on the 12th because they don't they never open on a Monday anyway so they'll be open on the Tuesday but the new charity shop is going to be open on the Monday and I'm going to be right there hammering on the door yeah. hi darling Carol I want to buy all your crap I mean good stuff Lisa Jay's planning a trip to Home Sense. I really want to go and wander around Dunelm, and that's how you know when you're a grown up. Mum wants to go there. <laughs> how can you tell when you're an adult and you're like, oh, a nice day at Dunelm? That, that's no, that's exactly it. She's like, oh, because they've got a nice cafe in there as well. Yeah, exactly. Although the cafe won't be open for us. I don't know what's happening with Welsh cafes, but we're still only allowed to eat outside until somewhere in May or June. Oh, 10th of May, I think. No. 26th of April are pubs for us. And then 10th of May is inside, apparently. We are 12th of April. Pubs are allowed to serve food outside. Nobody's allowed in. <gasps> Although I don't know how it works if you need the toilet. Presumably they must let they must have to let you in you to have, use the loos. You have pubs as well. Like 12th of I April. Outside, outside areas only. How come we've got a well, this is better than England? How come we've got to wait longer? Yeah, but you've got castles. Yeah, that's true, we do. <laughs> Very off, I suppose. So, yeah, um, 12th, 12th of April, I don't know when the indoor bit is for pubs. But non, 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 I'm stuck in a loop. Non-essential retail, 12th of April. Mm. Which means Dunelm should be open, but the cafe won't, because the cafe does not have an outdoor area for us. Yeah. So it means the cafe for us will be 10th of May. Hmm. Because that would be inside, yeah. It's all very complicated, isn't it? Mum, mum can just take a sandwich and a flask of coffee and sit outside. <laughs> Have a picnic. Should be all right. Picnicker. Yeah. So I'm, I'm um, 
yeah, uh, 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 yes, looking forward to that. I still don't know. Um, well, Cassie just says, like, when can we go to... I've got no idea. They haven't said when... when. Because it, it seems a bit silly that for it to not be the 12th of April, you know? It's like, if everyone can go and do all the relatively normal things again... Um, they've changed the stay at home to stay local i think haven't they they've changed yeah. it to you can you know minimize uh, the the big um light up sign down the road that used to say um essential travel only now says minimize minimize travel so i, I guess they still want people to not bug off different within wales i'm pretty sure we can travel within wales like wherever mm. But we just can't leave Wales, which seems a bit silly. Lisa says we're allowed to cross the border on the 12th, which means we can come in, but you can't come out. What the? That can't be. That's not. No. No, that can't be right. Vicky says, will your shops, regular charity, be open in general with specific requirements? When she says your, I don't know whether she's talking to both you and me or just you or just me. Because I don't know where Vicky the toy hoarder lives. I, um, she lives in... can't remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's the, the same social distancing rules that it was before. So... Um, yeah, only a certain amount in, allowed in at the same time. Got to wear a mask, got to sanitise. Um, some places still have the walk in the one direction thing. Yeah, from... Oh, she's from in Holland. She's talking to both of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think all of the social distancing measures are still in place. It's just that you can just go to all of the places now. I think we've gone back to the last time that he did this, which, which is kind of when they go, everything's open, please don't go there. So I can I can leave Wales from the 12th? You're not allowed to come and stay somewhere, though, are you? This is the thing. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's connecting the rules between the way you're allowed to go and when you're allowed to go inside when you get there. So you could leave Wales and come to Bristol, but you're not allowed to come and stay in my home because I'm not allowed people indoors until whatever date that is. Which in Wales would be the 10th of May. Yeah, I can't remember what our date was. We put it. Was it the 21st? We put it on Instagram. Yeah, something like that, wasn't it? So you could come and stay in a hotel up the road, in fairness. That's not fun, is it? No, and and expensive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't be the same because, like, you can't. We still won't be able to. No, we could eat out somewhere. In anywhere that's got outside areas after the twelfth of April, we can eat there. So we could. I mean, if you want to come over on the twelfth, I've got a table booked for me and Josh for lunch, and I booked for three people because I thought I'd rather book for three and turn up with two than book for. Two and turn up with three. <laughs> On the 12th. On the 12th. At 1.45. It's a Monday, I believe. How about if I just come down for the day? You could do that. The Shop, like said, shops, shops officially should be open, but whether we find any that are open is another matter. So I could literally, I could pop into town, go to the charity shop that's opening, load up on gear, probably have to take it home not bring it with me this time get on to train so like the 12 o'clock train or even the 11 or even the 10 o'clock maybe whichever one come across josh's birthday lunch yeah yeah oh sounds like a plan yeah <laughs> Sounds like a plan, providing there are trains. I'm presuming there's trains. Oh, well, there has to be because it's a Swansea London train. Mm. Thank you, Mandy. Yeah, people are saying if I get a tent, you can stay at the back. Um, I'm all right for that. I'll just go home the same day. It's okay. <laughs> My God, it'd be lovely to camp in. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> what an operation. Five weeks ago, you're fine now. No, it's six to eight weeks. Oh, Craig says he's got FOMO. Craig, I can see if I can add an extra one onto the book and then you can come down as well. Oh, well no, I'm gonna, no, I know we're not allowed to. Oh, I don't. I'm confused about how many people we're supposed to be allowed out with now. 
a six, isn't it? I don't know. I'm so lost track of all the fucking rules. It's ridiculous. I'm sure it's six now. Isn't it like it was before? I don't know. We'll socially distance is what we'll do. We'll socially fucking distance to our heart's content. It's very confusing. Yeah, six. 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 Yeah, six. So, yeah. But how many households are they allowed to be from if you're outside? Oh, I don't know. No, that's what I mean. It's so fucking confusing. <laughs> I don't get it. Last right. time it was, it was, I'm sure, in, well, in what this is in Wales though, that it was um, six people, but it was okay. But inside could only be from two households, I think. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm I very. You do, you done a cell? I done a cell. I done a sort of thing. Two households. I've uh, heard of these rumors. I don't know. Sorry, can I just come anyway and I'll say Yes, I'll just tell people you're my mum. <laughs> and if if we need anyone to back up, we'll go and find that weird woman from the charity shop. It's yeah. Can't make. Aaron says six people or two households, which can be more than six. Jilly right. says, but if you stay at someone's house for two weeks, you're part of that household. So just move in. Uh, orcs. <laughs> I've got quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't bring any stuff. I've already got quite a lot of stuff. Two households or six people. Yeah, so that's okay then. I don't know. All I know is the table's booked and if you want to come, you can come. And if anybody doesn't like it, I'm at the point where pff, I've just given up. I've given up trying to understand it all and we're doing our best. And she's not coming to stay, despite the fact that we very much want her to come and stay. And I haven't seen anyone for months and she hasn't seen anyone for months. And... Bah! Honestly. Yes, and yes, and yes, before anybody anywhere points out that other people are also going through this, I do realise we're not alone. I do get that. I was reading on Facebook a thread. It was um, one of those Sister Wives. Every, every, now, every now and again, TLC put up a little clip from Sister Wives and everybody in, in the chat comments talks about how fucking awful they all are. You know, the polygamists? What's that? Oh, the polygamists, right. Sister Wives, the Cody Brown family. And every single time that they say anything in their program about the, di the difficulties of social distancing when you are one family but four households because he's got four oh, wives, nice. yeah, and he goes between the four households and, and the ins and outs of whether or not that's that's appropriate is, is not up for discussion at the moment. But every time they say the difficulties of making the social distancing work and the bubbles and all the rest of it, not that they have the same rules we have, somebody in the comments goes, they act like it's all about them. Well, it's, it's, it's their TV show, so... So it is kind of kind of is all about. <laughs> yeah. That's why. That's why it, it, the the you know the cameras are on that, them. That kind of is the how that works. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's how documentaries work. Yeah, they don't just suddenly go. Oh, look, a kitten. Yeah. Lisa's um, saying, will you be able to pick Lex up from the station in the car, or will she have to hire one of those electric scooters? I'm thinking if I bring Anthony's old skateboard and a rope, and a rope. Yeah, I think that'll work. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um Aww. that Kirsten. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kirsten. We will get to see you again one day as well. One day. Yeah. We'll come visit you. <laughs> then you'll be sorry. And says so you can sleep on the sofa out front side outside my house. I'll wait two years too late. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that's that's the plan. That's okay, isn't it? Yeah, that's I think that's, so. Yeah. Like I said, you won't come inside my home. You won't come and sleep. You'll just come over and, and have a day out. And and I'll, I'll wear a mask in the car. And sanitise and, and I'll spray you with bleach as you get in. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'll spray myself with bleach before you get in, in case I'm the one with all the germs. I'm gonna say it's more likely to be you, to be fair, because because everybody knows England is the plague spot, plague spot, and, and Wales. My fringe, honestly, is driving me bonkers, and my brush isn't here. We had um, Bridgend had our first um, no new cases day the other day. 
it's been slowly going like down and then it was like one and then four and then two and then we had a zero the other day yay the yeah. cottage willow says i'm sorry that you guys are still doing the lockdowns and rules lots of love from diana in australia i have to say if we'd had your prime minister we might have had a different story <laughs> australian prime minister uh, oh is it the new zealand one which is the which is the one Australia have dealt with it incredibly well, haven't they? But I'm trying to think of which Prime Minister it is. New Zealand. New, huh? Zealand. New, New Zealand. Zealand. That, that's the lady one who basically picks up her kid and goes to work. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, my God, she's got her kid. And I was like, seriously, fucking powerful woman, that. Get the fuck yeah. off of it. You know, we could have done with her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's be it, because they just went like, right, shut borders. Yeah, Don't you're not coming in. Nobody's going out. That's the end of that. Yeah. Everyone yeah. stay still. Wait, wait, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, wow. Karen. Ka Karen. 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 What the fuck's her name? Um, Morning, Karen. Karen. Karina Bambina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jakinda. Jakinda, somebody or other. I can't think of her yeah. surname. I mean, to be fair, a lot more space in uh, in New Zealand for the distancing of stuff. But they did just go like, boom, straight away. Oh yeah, no, I did see your email. I was gonna um, reply. Morning, Victoria. Morning, Kaz's collection. DBG says our cases are rising by the day again. Apparently, another new stain because they refuse to close the border, so we're in for a fourth wave. You know. Uh, well, in Wales, every person over fifty has been offered the jab. And I think it's uh, one in four eligible people have now had it, I think. Uh, our rate is at a uh, one of the good things. Um, and there was something else. Oh, and I've put myself down on that, um, you know, spare jab list, because I'm like literally the, the center is about like 10 minutes yeah. away. So you could literally just dash down there, get jab dash yeah. home, yeah. Gimme, gimme, yeah. So, Morning, Damien. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Victoria's been offered. Nice one. Yay. So the veranda files. That was the first time she's ever emailed he or he or she or they have ever emailed a YouTuber, and you didn't reply. Do you see what you do to our reputation as YouTubers oh. when you ignore your fans? They're in America, and they messaged at like four in the morning or something. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever emailed a no. YouTuber. I might like, reply. I will. I I'm sure. I am sure, Veranda Files, that you are not saying it in that tone of voice. I'm sure you're not. I'm literally just jabbing Lex with, the, with that pointy stick for the fun of it. <laughs> Hi, Moira. Meanie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Karen's offering me sewing bits. Um, I would possibly like some sewing bits, Karen, but it would be awfully rude of me to get you to let me know what you what you're offering to send me in case in case it's in case it's something I wouldn't use first, because I'm finding that I've I've got a lot of stuff already that I need to kind of move some stuff on. So, <laughs> but Miranda <laughs> Files is sticking up for you now, so she hasn't ignored me. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Wow. Next, your question from last night. Where's the strangest place you had a wee? She says she didn't see you answer it. That's because I haven't really weed anywhere strange. Like, to be honest, um, other than at Glastonbury Festival and when I was a very small child, I've always used a flushable toilet. So I weed on my own kitchen floor. Yes, you did tell that story. That is, yeah. Inadvertently and und un undecidedly, oh. not un you know, not, not deliberately. No, wait, I did wet myself at the beach once, but again, I was quite young, and it was the sound of the waves and everything. And you know, <laughs> you know like, fizzy pop, but like lots of fizzy pop, because you know, it's all the beach. It's like, <laughs> oh, look at Ben. <laughs> Everyone message Lex at four a.m. and see who she likes most. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mean. <laughs> I'm literally going to set an alarm for four o'clock and wake up in the morning and do you love me? <laughs> and, I, and I'll just be there going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I suppose. I, I messaged my mate Scott this morning. Cause I, was, I was watching a film and I'll ask you the same question, right? So I just said, what film am I 
is this like the quote from that I'm watching? Now a warning. What film? What film? What film? Now, bear in mind the kind of films that I watch. Am I likely to have seen it? Yes, it's a classic with okay, great again. in it. Now a warning. Okay, picture the scene. So there's Isabella Rossellini looking incredibly sexy and holding a potion. It's um, it's it's hole in the stomach, throw you down the stairs. Bruce Willis, um, death becomes her. Yay! Death becomes her. Yeah, I was thinking the only thing I've seen Isabella Rossellini in is Friends when she turns Ross down, and then I was like, no, you, I know you've seen her. <laughs> now a warning. <laughs> oh, like now a warning. <laughs> Why were you watching films this morning? It's no, it's morning. It's not you know. Do you wake up and go, right, let's put on a film? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then you look at me as if I'm crazy. Not, not kidding. When I worked in Blockbuster and when I was a film student as well, I would easily watch like four films a day, easily. Oh, my God. Louise just said, I had a bit of a wee leakage once on a night out wearing wash-off fake tan. Oh, no. So it would have left lovely streaks. Down the inside of your legs. Oh, Jane, that's a lovely photo. Thank you. What's the photo? Jane's just sent me a picture of her grandchildren. Ah. Karen watched that episode on Friday night and she hasn't seen it since the 90s. What, Friends? Like, that's on constantly on some channel somewhere. Say episode. She just says, I watched that. So maybe she means the film. Oh, could be, yes. Yeah, love Death Becomes Her. That, I mean, it is a classic. And then I looked it up on IMDb, and it's only got a score of, like, 6.6. .6. Like, how is that possible? Yeah, I don't think it did very well at the time. I don't think it was a massive success. And, yeah, it is a really good film. It's awesome. And it won an Oscar for its special effects as well, apparently. Mm. I didn't know. Um, it's, a, it's a great film. I don't know how it got panned. Like, it's awesome. But... There we are. I also... I, I where she screws her head back. <laughs> her neck's all. <laughs> and, the, and they're like, what, this doesn't hurt? What, this doesn't hurt? And you go, <laughs> crunching, you go, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, horrible. Oh, Chris has not seen it, nor Julie. Definitely worth looking out for. Oh, my God. You definitely need to see it. It's on uh, Netflix. Like, I think it just got added this week. Um, but no, definitely watch it. It's Great, proper classic film. Like, yeah. Um, I've also been watching some very serious films like this weekend as well. So I watched The Long Walk Home, which is um, Whoopi Goldberg and Sissy Spacek. And um, and it's um, about the time that um, um, like Martin, Martin Luther King was, you know, saying, you know, Black people revolt and stuff, and they um, and the black people were like boycotting using buses because they were you know housemaids and things, and so they had to like walk to work. So that was that was a good film. It's about like the friendship between two women, and I also watched Antebellum, which is by the producer of Us and Get Out, um, which is like about slavery and things, and I watched another serious one. Oh, the 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 Mauritanian. That was a good one. But again, very serious. About Guantanamo Bay. Very good. You wouldn't like any of those films. We used to have a pub called the Mauritania in Bristol. Really? Mm -hmm. Quite an odd name for a pub. I think it was named after a ship. I think a lot of pubs get named after oh, ships. Oh, no, the Mauritanian was the ship that came and saved people from the Titanic, oh. wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, there we go. And I say we had a, we had a pub called named the Mauritania. Mm. I am interested, Katie. I'm just trying to pull my chin up because I've noticed that if I sit like this, then my mouth turns down. So I'm literally just trying to persuade my face muscles that I'd rather look a bit like that. Not a lot like that because that's a bit weird, but a bit less like that. Beautiful. That's the look. 
that's definitely the look. Face is collapsing with old age. Aww, get a facelift like I am. We're not going to go into that. Bull dog clips. We start doing the sellotape thing and then it all starts getting very painful. Yeah. No, the Mauritanian, very good film. I did enjoy that in a, how can you enjoy fil a film about Guantanamo Bay and people being tortured and stuff? But it, it was good and it's, you know, true, true story as well, which, you know, is... I watched Mystic Pizza a few years ago through sheer nostalgia. I was like, oh, I haven't seen Mystic Pizza since the 80s, you know, since the first time. Julia yeah. Roberts, one of Julia Roberts' very first films. And I was like, oh, I watched that. And, and it was, it's a shit film. And I was just like, I, this was a big film. Why, why, you know, why were we so easily pleased? Oh, <laughs> I, I watched um, Practical Magic, which I'd never seen before. I and think I've seen that once. Well, the, the description of, of it made me think that it was going to be entirely different. And it, That's and the one where her husband dies and... And he comes and he and he comes back because he's got like a really bad twisted soul and stuff. And then they're mm. trying to use their yeah. womanly magic to like banish him and things. But I, oh, I don't know. I wasn't fussed on that at all, you know. No. I loved Heather's Victoria Plum. I liked the book of The Outsiders, but I didn't like the film. Heather's was great, and I very much like Heather's because in my dissertation, I also got to talk about that one as well. And um, Favourite Brat Pack film is probably St Elmo's Fire. Yeah? Yeah, I love, I love St Elmo's Fire. Oh. Um, I used to like anything with um, Thing of Me What's It in there. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Can't think of his name. Um, Matt, he was also in Mannequin. Help me out. Somebody, somebody will think of his oh, name. Matthew Broderick. No, 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 not him. Not. James Spader. I and love somebody, him. Somebody's going to shout it in the chat any minute now. I freaking love James Spader. Any age of his life. Like Andrew McCarthy. Andrew, Andrew McCarthy. McCarthy. Yeah, um, you still love anything with Andrew McCarthy in it. Yeah, Breakfast Club is my favourite, I think. I I do also like um, Pretty, oh, in, Pretty Pink. in Pink was good. Pretty in Pink, yeah, like Pretty in Pink. But mainly because it always gets me, you know, when, when they like transform her dress and it, and it's like, it's, oh, that dress is so beautiful. And you're there going, that's fucking disgusting. Yeah. Like, ew. The dress was better before. It was gorgeous, like, yeah. the dress. And then you've done that to it. Yeah. God. But, um, yeah, I, I love Mannequin as well, though. Mannequin's a great film. Mannequin's a great film, yeah. Love that. Um, Why well, Snapchat started harassing me? I've, I don't use Snapchat. I've, Snapchat. I've never used Snapchat. And in the last fortnight or so, it started, like, notifying me constantly that it, will, it would like me to pay attention. Probably because TikTok has taken over its... Uh, I don't want to. I'm literally sitting here now uninstalling. Yeah, I've I've grown out of of down you. Yeah. Morning, oh, Rachel. Oh, weird science, the Goonies. It's weird science. Yeah. Was that number five is alive? Is that what I'm thinking of from Weird Science? No, number that, five is alive. No, that's short circuit. Short circuit. Daniel I is alive. <laughs> yeah. No, I like short circuit as well. What was the first thing you ever saw in a cinema? That I remember seeing was the Black Cauldron and uh, Labyrinth, and I only really specifically remember them because they were in the Embassy Cinema in Bridgend, which was a beautiful Art Deco cinema, which has since been knocked down and turned into a car park, which mm. is very typical for Bridgend. But gorgeous Art Deco, you know, like the black and white, and then uh, like um, red velvet and gold, and like oh, gorgeous cinema. But yeah, I remember watching. Black Cauldron and being like a little bit like behind the seat going like, oh, it's a bit scary, you know. Um, and then the Labyrinth, I very much remember that one because in the foyer they were selling Labyrinth books, which was like a choose your own adventure book. And you could like colour in and do the puzzle and stuff. And then it's like, right. And then which way do you go? Go to page 16. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> it's so cool. I wish I still had that. I bet that would be worth a fortune now. First film I ever saw at the cinema was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. 
I think I might have seen that in the cinema as well. Two seconds. And in Cardiff, I remember seeing Gremlins in the cinema as well. So when would that have been? That was for a birthday as well, I think. Um, see, now you're all showing your ages, aren't you? Um, you remind me of the babe, the babe, the babe with the power. What power? The power of the voodoo. Who do you do? What you remind me of the babe? I saw my baby. Crying hard as they could cry. What could I do? Um, someone said a Toy Story. I started working in a cinema in uh, Croydon when Toy Story 2 came out. And also at the same time was Stigmata and Sleepy Hollow. Here we go. Karin's first film was the Care Bears movie. Oh, bless. And Flight of the Navigator, I loved Flight of the Navigator. Oh my God, Leanne, you really are like a baby, aren't you? Your first cinema trip, trip was Zoolander. I remember going to see um, Gross Point Blank when I was about 13, and I was a 15, and going like, yes, we got into a 15 film. Woo! You're back, well done. Just saying that that like I uh, watched the film Gross Point Blank, which was a 15. I watched it when I was 13 and we didn't get ID'd and we were all like, yay, we just got into a 15. And then you were in there going, oh, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. I like Gross Point Blank. It's a good film. Yeah. Um, oh, Aiden, morning, Aid. This is the moment when you realise that some people are very much younger than you. Yeah, exactly. No, that's what I was saying. Because I started, <laughs> started work in the cinema in Croydon when Toy Story 2 came out. And that was a crazy, crazy few weeks. It's oh, a crazy, and crazy, crazy, crazy time. And I worked, I worked there in the cinema as well when Gladiator came, Gladiator came out. And that's like a three hour long movie, isn't it? And at the time, it was boiling hot summer as well, and all of our air conditioning had packed out. And um, in the, the biggest screen, you could fit like 450 people, I think, and it was selling out. But people were fainting like in the cinema, like in the screen, because I because of no air conditioning and stuff. And we were going in with like buckets of ice for people and things. It was ridiculous. <laughs> like, how was that actually legal to be able to shove 450 people in a room? <laughs> in the middle of summer like and also how dumb are they to stay in there as well you know wouldn't have been that she loved back to the future got the sticker book and everything i had the et sticker book and yet i've never seen et <laughs> swallow if you love me you'll swallow it <laughs> you've never seen et no Never really needed to. Everyone knows the story, don't they? <laughs> it's not that good. It's not that good. I've never seen Titanic. Mm. I've seen bits of Titanic here and there, but I've never sat down and watched the whole of Titanic. I think we've had this conversation before. And like spoilers, it's yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. I can quote huge bits of Titanic, and yet I've never seen it because it's so much in the public consciousness. Yeah. Consciousness that yeah, yeah. Jack, I'm flying. Shut I'll up. never let go, lying bitch. Yeah, I know. She definitely does let go. She keeps hold of the freaking diamond, though, until the end. And that was saying yesterday, there was room on that door for six people, and yet, suddenly... <laughs> and what I don't understand is, as well, right, um, it's like, like, he was still alive, you know, and, and other people were, were just there, like, he could have, like, grabbed a few other people's, like, bits and, and got on top of them. And floated a bit. Oh, she could have been a little bit less, you know, like I'll go in water for a bit. You have ten minutes on on the door. Yeah. Selfish cow. Yeah. Mm. Kirsten's never watched Mary Poppins. Now that is a surprise because it's on fourteen times a year. True. It's probably on today. If it's not on today, it's almost definitely on tomorrow. I I I I, I like. Some of Mary Poppins, in a way, because she's weird. 
And isn't there a theory? You know, I've never seen Lion King, Lynn. There's some things I deliberately don't watch because I know that there's sad bits that I won't like. So just don't watch them. Yeah. I don't watch anything where there's any any possible chance of an animal being unhappy. I don't watch it at all. So I haven't watched Marley and Me, for example, because I know the dog dies. I won't watch it. Don't I don't watch, watch Dumbo. Dumbo, incredibly sad film. Bambi, incredibly sad film. Don't watch them. Don't watch um, things to be made sad. Enough stuff in life making me sad as it is without, <laughs> without entertainment doing it as well. Do you want Do you want to hear something that's a little bit sick? You know, you know the little Disney uh, bags that they've got in Poundland. You know, it's got like pictures of Disney mm. characters on like the, you know, Hesse yeah. bags. The one of Bambi is the shot of the moment that the Bambi sees his dead mummy. It's like, can you put that on a bag? Yeah. Like you said. <laughs> yeah, like I said, there's a reason. Like, there's a reason I don't watch this stuff. It, that, this isn't to me. Entertainment is not heart. Is not supposed to be heart wrenching. Never watched, you know, you know, the ones with, you know, the never ending journey or whatever, the long, long walk, long journey home with the dogs and the cats that have been abandoned and are trekking across country to find their people. No, no. absolutely fucking not. I haven't seen them either. No. But no, same, like you can, you can shoot as many people as you want in front of me and, you know, on film or in real life or whatever. Um, and it's like, oh, oh dear, he's dead. But like, you know, you stroke a cat the wrong way, and I'm like, no, critters. I remember watching critters with my friends. We'd have been about 14. We we're watching it at a friend's house, and at the end, the house burns down in critters. They you know, somehow the, the house burns down, and I'm in absolute floods of tears. And, and my friends are like, What are you crying about, you sad fucker? And I was like, I don't think the cat got out, I think the cat's still in there. Oh. <laughs> Can't cope. No. Can't cope with it. Oh my God, the littlest hobo. There's a voice. Keeps on calling me. No, absolutely not. Oh, Jack, Let is about to tell you her Watership Down story. So, okay, right. So your <laughs> mum wouldn't let you watch it. My mum made me watch it and goes, learn about life, kid. Okay, she didn't exactly say it. <laughs> but like, she knew it wasn't exactly a happy bunny story and still let me watch it. And and oh my God. Like, I don't think I've cried harder like at anything ever. Like <laughs> bunny. Oh, but it is a brilliant film then, you know? And book, obviously. But you know, I love the animation in it. I think it's gorgeous. But Jesus. I like comedies. I like it to be funny. I like it to be entertaining and light-hearted. At no point do I wish to be crying. Thanks. I Flipping do. Les Miserables. I had to leave the cinema. This we, we went. We watched it twice. The first time I watched it. The second time I was like, right, I'm going to go for a week because I know which bit's coming up, and I'm going to cry until I can't see. Empty chairs at empty tables. Oh my, my god! god. Empty, empty tables, and I cry at the bit where um. Oh my brain. Uh, where Javert kills himself. Ah. Yeah, I cry like a baby at that because at the end of the day, he's not a bad man. Javert is not a bad man. He's instituting he's doing what he thoroughly, completely believes to be the right thing. And when he comes to this blinding realisation that life is not black and white and that what he has believed all his life may not be the correct thing, he can't cope with that. He's like, I cannot do my job like this and I cannot I cannot deal with being this. And so, and, and that just breaks me. So yeah, I had to go to the toilet twice the second time I watched it because I can't stay in the, can't stay in the cinema and watch that. <laughs> no, we we watched it um, in the cinema. Um, my sister and my brother-in-law was was with us, and at the point of you know the the empty chairs at empty tables, like turn round and all of us were just like <laughs> like even Steve, who's you know like you know, was <laughs> it's horror, it's it's heartbreaking, it really is, and and, and it's the whole. It's it's the it's the cessation of life at such a young age. It's the waste of so many young lives, and it's also the the broken faith in in the people. It's the the idea that that they, that they that they went through with this with this. I don't know. I can't. I can't verbalise what I'm trying to say. But you know, with this, the, the idealism and the, and that the people will get behind us, and we will be able to change the world, and the world will be a better place. And all the people stay in their houses with their shutters should, and and you know, and go. Oh no, we're not getting involved. 
and and anyone who's seen that scene and doesn't feel the frustration at the at the loss of those young lives of, the, of that idealism and of that blazing desire to change a bad situation for something better i think those are the same people who are going oh no we shouldn't be protesting Ugh, yeah ah. <laughs> yeah i'm not seeing gladiator cottage willow yeah the optimism that breaks your heart thank you rachel so i need i just need somebody else to do the words because i have the feelings i just do not have the words yeah <laughs> um <laughs> And a flat cap. <laughs> <laughs> well, mum, mum moved to uh, South South Africa, South Africa, um, South Africa, um, when she was, what would I say, twenty two, twenty three, and then moved to Wales in like a year before I was born, I think. So in like nineteen seventy eight. So was there. I can't go ask her now she's vacuuming something. So she actually hasn't lived in Yorkshire since she was in her early 20s. So it's been a, a long time, you know. Yeah. But I don't think she has any kind of Welsh accent. I mean, I, other people might think different, but, like, to me, she doesn't sound Welsh. Mm. Or, no, I don't see, I don't hear Welsh when I hear mummy. Mm. Now, see, that, Fandria, is the most well-made and poignant piece of television, in yeah. my opinion, ever made there was a moment where there's a moment where george says to blackadder sir i'm 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 scared sir and i can't remember blackadder's line but it's something along the lines of if you weren't scared you'd be an idiot or something like that you know but but that moment when he goes sir i'm scared sir oh no definitely because, because it's the whole... fucking real because yeah. it really happened because thousands of of again, idealistic young men. Some some who were there because they believed they were fighting for us. Some who were there because they were given no fucking choice because they were conscripted into the army because they were sent hundreds of miles away from their family to die in a muddy hole in a field because stupid stupid men push plastic soldiers around a board and go oh, 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 oh. yeah exactly yeah. because it's so fucking real that bit when they go over and you know. You know that they are going, they're climbing up a ladder and facing almost certain death at the end of a comedy series. Mm. And you laugh all the way through that episode and then suddenly at the end, bang. And you're like, and, and that is so well made. Mm. So just, just yeah, Ben Elton and, and Richard Curtis and, and just, you know, are you actually geniuses? Feel, I, again. <laughs> that, um, that the the slow the slow down version of that like that is um um an accident they it wasn't meant to be a slow motion version of that it was meant to be like the scene was going to continue after that apparently um uh, but whatever ending they'd written they were like oh that doesn't work so then they tried it slow down and they were like yes like that's mm. the one. And then the the cross fade. And then when, like, when when it just crossed in, into the poppies yeah. and oh and my that's, god, that's the bit for me that that's the uh, you know here's on the ne back of the neck stand up, you know, like mm. doing that like that's the, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, very good. Um, Lainey mentioned some really good films there. That um, three three billboards outside of Epping, Missouri. That was a good film, wasn't it, Mum? Well, I have not seen that. That has got um, Francis McDormand. Francis McCormand, yeah. McDormand, yeah. She's awesome. It was too sad. It was too sad. It's also got um, 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 Christ, why can't I remember his name when I love him so much? Sam Rockwell in it as well. But that's a good film. I think that, like, I would, I would love there to be. Um, I know they they have done some black adders, you know, like uh, they did the Christmas one, didn't they? Mm. But I would definitely love, like, uh, a, 
they couldn't do it a more recent one than the than like the first world war i think the second world war well, i think I, the point is that every single series of blackadder has been the next generation of the blackadder family it has been you know the yeah. the grandson of the previous one well the the, the line ended. The line ended at the end of the First World War because he went over the top. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the difficulty with even if, even if they wanted to make another series, I feel it would. You could make another one back in time. You could choose oh, another period in time prior to that. But yeah, do like yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, like the Queen Victoria series is is my favorite, but because of Miranda Richardson, because that and Elizabeth, Flash, Elizabeth like, Flash, not Victoria, Elizabeth, yeah, sorry, like because like, and and Flash, you know, aha, yeah, like, I love, you know, um, yeah, but I think that that series is my best because she is just completely insane. I love it, yeah. Um, Jack says, can we all just watch Hot Fuzz and have a, a laugh? I'm not that keen on Hot Fuzz, to be honest. Like, it's all right, but, um, but yeah, not, not that thing. Um, of Mice and Men is good, yeah, that's a good film. Again, bit of a bolo, if you see it out there, you know. Um, when Rimmer leaves Red Dwarf, I but how does he leave? Is that is that the Stroke Me a Kipper? That that's Ace Rimmer, isn't it? When Ace Rimmer leaves Red Dwarf, yeah. I, wonder if, I wonder if she's referring to Ace or, or rather than um, Arnold. But you know, the, it's it's a. Oh, sorry, I've got the reseller fly. Go away. <laughs> it's a parallel universe Rimmer, isn't it? Yeah. Smoke me a kipper. I'll be back for breakfast. Uh, there's four series and a Christmas special, Lainey. Yeah. But the first series is a is a bit uh, the the characters are um, kind the, of the characters switch after series one. So in series one, Edmund Blackadder is a complete knobhead, mm. and Baldrick is the is the brains of the outfit. Bizarrely, yeah. And then after that, the characters switch, and and Baldrick becomes becomes an idiot, and uh, Blackadder becomes crafty. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Which works. But series one. Series one is still a really good. So there's some bloody good lines in it. I mm. I still wander around now, going, I like not this news. Bring me some other news. <laughs> oh, and it's, I, exactly. It's got Brian Blessed in it, so you know, like that, that's <laughs> always a winner, isn't it? And no, nobody ever knows what I'm referencing when I say that. Nobody ever goes, oh, Black Hannah. But yeah, I like not this news. Bring me some <laughs> other news. <laughs> yeah, don't watch it, Lainey, Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, Hot Fuzz was filmed in Wells, where your brother lives. Because mm. we had to shoot some scenes there as well. So we were staying in the... Um, I was the, the travel coordinator, so I had to book the hotels. So I booked the hotel that they used in Hot Fuzz. Mm. And we, we took up the whole hotel. So we were like, right, who, who's in like Simon Pegg's room, you know? <laughs> but it's, it was nice because it was right opposite the Wells Cathedral and like, it was a lovely place. Mm. Really pretty town. Yeah. Yeah. What a pity he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Stop giving away reseller tips, says Double Karma. Sorry, I've got. I mean, sometimes it's you know we do reseller related stuff. Very occasionally, the odd blog here and there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Anya. Yeah, I I I won't I won't give any more away. Um. Oh my God, Sausage Party is an awful awful film. Anyway, just don't like. Not even like, you know, it's not a kids' film. It's not anyone's film. It's just like gross you know oh victoria's um great great grandpa was awarded freedom of brussels medal in the war for rescuing a belgian soldier under enemy fire he was just a lowly barber from a little welsh village makes you think what they went through yeah mm. see yeah. Welsh. 
Um, me. Yeah. I had a few few nice days when I was like, oh, here we go. We're almost back to how things used to be. And then it went, and it's a bit shit again now. But I'm still listing, as you can see, if, if you can see. I don't know if you can. Anyway, I've got a pile of clothes here. I've got a pile of clothes here. I could see them a minute ago. Perhaps it was when we were on Diddy Screen. Ta-da! <laughs> I'm still listing. I've done, I did 35 drafts yesterday. 37 drafts yesterday, and I'm photographing them today and getting them up. Well done. So, yeah. I yeah. Made it my earlier in the week. My eBay's like okay. You know what? You know, I say this and then and then you know, if someone asks me my figures, they'll go, mm, that's still good. Like I know. I know. Yeah, but it's comparatively comparative to you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, Anya. I I know sarcasm, it's fine. Um yeah. Like like it, it's just it's just a bit like when when you I'm still like ten percent up on last year and stuff, so it's like I, I know it's not it's not exactly I'm you know oh, I'm destitute or anything. It's just yeah, when you when you used to see your graph like that and then it goes oh no, yeah, well, how, what, what, what's going on? You know, warm um, weather always does it, doesn't it? The moment the warm weather comes, we go the sales go blue because people are outside doing stuff instead of inside buying stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, Jack says eBay's a minefield. I went from none in a month to five in three days. See, and honestly, weird things have been happening as well. I had um, a message about something that, and I'd answered this message like ages ago, and then like it popped up again, and I was like, I've already answered this question, and they answered it like a long time ago as well, and then the message turned up like, and it was blank, and I'm like, and I didn't get an email notification about it. It's like that's weird. And then another thing, something that I'd sold a couple of weeks ago somehow appeared on my unsold listings like just overnight mm. it appeared there so if i hadn't noticed that i could have like relisted that and then done that you know it sells yeah. again oh, look i haven't got it yeah and that's just yeah and i don't know is this about maybe they, they tend to extend the delivery times over bank holiday weekends and stuff so it might be that yeah, they, they extended it way too far because yeah because somebody sent me a message saying do you think you could get this to me before the 12th of april and i was like well, yeah, unless unless I die, I don't see any problem with that. And, and, and when I looked, it said estimated yeah. delivery 12th of April. I was like, bloody hell, I could walk it to her in that time and get home and have a cup of tea. You yeah. know? <laughs> you don't even like tea. So, yeah. yeah. No, they, they was definitely, they, they kind of overestimated the bank holiday weekend, mm. I think. So. Well, it's two it's bank different. holidays, isn't it? That's the thing. So the Friday is classed as a bank holiday. And then the Monday as well. So normally anything that you sell on a Wednesday, if you've got a three-day dispatch on, they'll estimate delivery as the Monday. But if you've got a three-day dispatch on and it's an Easter weekend, they'll estimate delivery as like the following fucking Monday. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And somebody, I think it was Deb Hughes, sent me a message saying that they had done something crazy to her postage settings that they'd, I think it was Deb Hughes. Now I'm wondering if it was a different Deb because more than one Debbie in the world. No, it was Deb Hughes. Um, they had changed all of her postage options to second class 20 kilos, £28.55. What? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which may have affected her sales a little bit, eh, when people go, I'll pay £28.55 to have that pencil delivered. <laughs> a little bit. Hmm. Wow. But yeah, she messaged me and, I, and mine were nothing nothing untoward on mine so there's some weird blips though isn't there so it's when they're, when they're trying to fix stuff and it's like just just leave things alone yeah, for stop a fixing second. things that we're not complaining about and start oh. fixing the things that don't work such as i mean we, we won't say but such as you know certain people's eight grand problem mm. yeah we won't say you know but yeah cheapest yeah, it makes you realise that certain people are extremely wealthy, though, eh? That that was just a little... <laughs> I, wonder if, I wonder if those people are watching. <laughs> they, they took two, two and a half million pounds out of my account, but it's OK. I didn't have to... Look, I mean, luckily, there was enough in there to cover it, but... <laughs> Do 
That is, um, in, in fairness, without without um, being too funny, that is a bit of an alarming warning about not keeping your money in paper where it can be just got atable, isn't it, you know? Because um, George Ross had the same issue, didn't he? That They basically told him, we're taking your pay. I don't know if he's managed to deal with it. I don't know if they've yeah, seen they've, an update. They've reinstated his account. Oh, right. But yeah, yeah. And, and what what got me about that was that we are closing your PayPal account and we are keeping your money for 180 days. If they did that to me, mate, I'd lose my house. So don't do that. <laughs> don't. Oh, no, you freaking not. Yeah. I'm coming round. <laughs> yeah. yeah if you, I'll have to come and stay in your house, eBay, if you do mm. that. Claire Plant says her eBay decided it had reached, she'd reached her monthly allowance saying she'd sold over a million pounds in the month already. All right, little stealth boast about your success. <laughs> and, and, and also uh, maybe a little bit over the VAT. A little threshold. bit. Yeah, you may have may have reached the VAT threshold if you're selling a million pounds in a month, Claire. Mind you, no, no, it's profits, isn't it? So to be fair, if, she, if, her, out, if her outlay is, is 999,000, then she's not going to have to pay VAT. No, no, no. It's if your turnover for the year is eighty. Oh, is it? Oh, in that case, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of tax allowances. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm, yeah, silly me. No, because, because oh, enough, I'm not anywhere near the VAT threshold, so it's not something I have a great deal of knowledge about. I might be. You might be. Bloody hell, Lex. Me. I mean, we just start buying some sparkly shit. Apparently, no. it's what the money is. No, no, don't do that. No. Um, <laughs> Um, no, me, I mean, I am terribly bad at maths, but like, well, actually, I'm really good at maths. I, I just am terribly bad at concentrating at things. But there's a possibility that if things like increase on the same trajectory, that yeah. So I have to start being a bit shit. <laughs> mm. So I don't hit that. Yeah, because that sounds like a right pain in the ass. I think or it's buy like a company car. Huh? Or buy a company car. Oh no, that's tax allowances again, isn't it? Allowance, yeah. Yeah. Again, that's why I've I've like um bought stuff end of financial year. Um stuff that I needed for the business, obviously, not just you know randomly buying shit. You know. What you oh I did Molly. <laughs> She's looking at Swiggles. She's looking at Cyril's, yeah. Aww. <laughs> I just showed everybody your butts. Hello. You right? Good girl. You're in the little box. Molly. Molly. Molly Moo. So, no, not interested. Really not interested at all. There you are. Look, who's this here? No, you've gone, right? Not no. gone. Oh. Oh, Red V says, if you both had one wish each, what would it be? Not including world peace, no hunger, no COVID. So, so no big ones, just one one little wish each. Is it, is, we, do you mean a personal wish each? Is that what we're going with? So you can't use your wish for the general good of all. So it has to be a selfish wish. Ooh, yeah. now, now you're going to get into Phoebe territory and, and point out that there's no such thing as a selfish act because everything... No, no, she wants to do it. I want to be completely selfish. I don't want to help anyone. Oh, she else. was trying to be selfless. Yeah, that was it. No, I just I, I just want like right, what are the things that I really want? I just want to be fixed. <laughs> like just have all the things that are wrong with me fixed. That would be great. You know? Like like rebooted and just gone, there you go, clean slate, start again, crash all the things back into place and stuff. That that, that would be good. I think I'd like a financial windfall, whether it's a lottery win or whatever. I'd like, I would like to suddenly be be in possession of enough money to buy a home in a location of my choice, of the style of my choice. You know what I mean? And I'm not necessarily talking eighty-seven room mansion in, in, but if you know what I mean, I'd like to be able to buy next door. I don't know. Is there much storage next door? There's, there's there's a garage yeah mm. yeah no I, 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 a, a nice nice home with, with a nice lot of room for the dogs i'd like something where i know that i could open the back door and let them go and they'd have plenty of space to play in and no danger of of disappearing or whatever and um and I, the reason i'd like a lot of room rather than just my wish to be the house is because some there's some other people i like to help as well so i'd like there to be some leftover oh 
So, yeah. Oh, I have to say again, like, um, thank you for um, coffee. I can't remember who it was I sent it the other day. Hang on, I just need, I'm just going to check. It sent me one the other day. Come on, come on, people. Any minute now. Any yes. Minute. Thank you to everyone who coffees me. I always say thank you when you do. I always put a thank you on as well. Um, but again, Mary, I, really Mary. Appreciate, I really appreciate every every single one of you and every single one of them. And all the people who buy from me as well. I notice more and more names cropping up in the customers names when i'm when i'm doing my orders so thank you to all of you your support is extremely valued and um very much appreciated uh, yeah that's it appreciated that's the word i was looking for i was going to say welcomed but i thought I, that, that didn't sound like the, the word i wanted very much very very much appreciated kirsten would like a cottage with a drive a front door and a sunny garden Aww. Leanne wants a cottage in the countryside with no mortgage to renovate slowly over the years and no Death Watch Beetle, you know. Jeanette wants a round-the-world ticket to get out of these four walls. Oh, Rebecca's been enjoying the decluttering videos. We weren't very welcome. Uh, Lynn wants her weight off on a house at the coast. The decluttering videos, which I'm going to be honest, it looked like you had exactly the same amount of stuff at the end. <laughs> no, I really didn't. Really didn't honestly two big boxes. No, I, stuff went no, I saw the amount that, that you got rid of, and, and it was just like, well, all of that stuff that she's keeping fits in there now. So, how on earth did all of that? Also before, it was very much, a, I just want that casserole dish. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and now you can just go, there's the casserole dish. So, yeah, it was, it was um, very overcrowded in those cupboards before. Uh, Lisa, Lisa uh, J wants a farm. She wants she wants um, uh, sheep and a cow and breed horses. <laughs> it's me plan. It's me Fiji plan. <laughs> yeah. Jack I wouldn't want to the farm back that his mum grew up on, as it was before the land oh, auction no. and outbuildings were built. So Jack also wants a time machine. A bit greedy. Time machine would be cool, though. What I really do want to do, I was thinking about this while I was walking the dogs this morning, and I don't know why it suddenly popped into my head, but what I really do want to do is get a headstone from my grandmother's graves. Yeah. And that's something that I would that, that I need to look at. I don't know how much headstones cost, but I should imagine it's something I could save up for, and it's presumably an attainable sum. It's presumably not, you know, a, a ridiculous yeah. sum. That, without wishing to trigger anybody if you're having if you've had a distressing time recently but if anybody in the chat has purchased a headstone within the last few years and can give me a vague idea of what sort of price range they start at because i've had a look online but it seems to be a subject that websites are a bit shy of, of putting figures on like like maybe it's, it always says i'll oh, ring us for a quote or or enter your email address and, and we'll get back to you and i'm like could you not just put a list up of this is how much a head for a headstone costs i think it's it's like the same with plastic surgery and stuff they yeah, like, just get a price they they almost want to go like so how much can you afford mm. you know yeah um, how much do you love this person you know do you want it like covered in gold you know See, my grandmothers are in two adjacent graves because they died within three months of each other. That was my my granny Thomas and her mother, my granny Hammond, and they died with sorry within within six months of each other. And so they were eight, so they were able to have the plot next to when when my great grandmother died. We were able to get the plot next to my grandmother. No, nobody else had gone into that plot for whatever reason, which means theoretically you could have one headstone across the across the two. Mm. Graves, couldn't you? I presume there's no law that says that you can't do that if they're both your relative. I don't. I honestly, I, I honestly do not know. No idea. Jilly says between four hundred and a thousand. Karen said her father-in-law's was a thousand, but that had a picture on. Nia says she thinks her dad's was six hundred. So that's a lot less than I thought. Mm -hmm. I kind of had, yeah, I had a lot more in my head. Yeah. But that is something I would like to deal with. Um, and again, if I had a if I had a windfall, that's one of the things I would go and do. I want um, in Pierre Lachaise 
in Tup France, you know, we're all t famous people buried like Oscar Wilde and Edith Piaf and Le Family Bastard. Um, they've got some fantastic like gravestones and like temples and things. And there's one which I think is pretty cool. And it, it looks like, like a tomb. And then the top of it is like cracked. And then there's like a guy crawling out of it. It's like, that one's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And there's one like a piano and stuff. In fact, but yeah, the, the guy like climbing climbing out, oh, it's like, that's that's mad, mm. you know? But Pere Lachaise is, is, you know, it's a cool graveyard if you can have one. But, um, Jim Morrison's there as well. Jim Morrison's is quite small. Like mm. his, it's very like a normal size gravestone. But um, all like his is fenced off because everyone wants to like leave plectrums and kisses and they write little notes and put candles and stuff. And all the trees around it are like, like got carved in it, you know, like, I love you, Jimmy, and stuff. Like, okay, you know. Um, mm. And then they, they have to put glass around the Oscar Wilde one um, because, again, people were, like, leaving their kisses, you know, lipstick marks on it and stuff. So they leave lipstick marks on the glass instead. Mm. <laughs> or, like, throw roses in and love letters and stuff. It's quite sweet, though. Mm. But also, you've got a bit carried away, haven't you? You know what I mean? If you're... If you're visiting the grave of someone who you never met and never knew, and kissing the kissing it and throwing roses in, you've got you've got a bit carried away. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not meaning to upset anybody, but I just feel like you've got a bit carried away. <laughs> Andrea, have you got that message? <laughs> Millions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack sent me pictures of um of the farm his mum grew up on, and and he says, "Can you see why I miss it?" Yeah, it, it, it must. I must admit, it looks gorgeous. Look at the doggy. Oh, the <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's something I really must look into, and I presume I don't even know about how it go how it how it works. Oh yeah, see, Lainey says the council charged five hundred twenty pounds to erect the headstone, even though we own the plot. So that was interesting. Her parents' headstone was two thousand four hundred. Depends on the letters you add, what it's made of, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So I don't even know who you contact about getting it done. Whether you go to a headstone makers or whether you go to the council or whether you go to both it's, it's a complete mystery to I would me have thought you'd maybe ask the like the funeral director hi susie because they because they would have all of the contacts you know so they would go like right so you need to talk to this yeah see they, they've mm -hmm. been they've been they died in 2002 and 2003, so it's been... It's not an unmarked grave. They're not in an unmarked grave, but it had a little wooden cross on it, which I know damn well will not have, surve will not have um, survived the test of time. And um, it's, it's bone of contention with me because I did not inherit at that time. And I believe the people who did inherit, mentioning no names, elder members of my family, should have bought a fucking headstone. <laughs> uh, yeah. Little sore point. It's a little sore point, and not all of the people who inherited are around anymore. And 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 anyway, I feel that that it was not done and should have been done. There we go. Mm. Yeah, that's how, that's how I feel about it. So, yeah, I must look into it. And actually, you know, I should just get Sue Bad Wolf to do it because it's in her hometown, so she could just deal with it all for me. And yeah, because now because she can be my PA. <laughs> she, she'll just go and do it herself <laughs> just knock up a quick headstone and yeah. yeah i don't think she's in this morning i've not seen her she's probably asleep because she was probably up late with laney last night yeah kirsten says she'd like a tree planted for her we can arrange that kirsten <laughs> how soon does she yeah mum's asking how soon <laughs> I must admit, I was joking yesterday. We took Buddy to the beach, and he is an absolute knobhead in the car. He's a complete 
idiot in the car. And he drives you by. By the time you get there, you're so sick of him. And when we got there, I was like, this is a nice place to scud scatter Buddy's ashes. And that was like, shall I get some sticks? <laughs> We're yeah, in the car on the way back. <laughs> yeah, wound us up somewhat on the journey. <laughs> Went out with three, came back with two. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Kirsten, we'll plant the tree for you, but not just yet a while, eh? Jack was asking if, if we think there's any chance of a reseller meetup this year because he'd love to meet us all in person. I don't know if there's any chance of it, but I do know that if it starts to look possible, we will do it. Yeah. We will absolutely do it because I don't know if, if you were around, Jack, when the when the last ones were cancelled last year. We had one plan for Bristol that we had to cancel and there would have been a hitch in, I'm sure, and that wasn't able to happen. So certainly if there's any chance of it, we'll make it happen. People are saying you contact the funeral directors. Um, Lainey is saying contact the local council. And Yvonne says you think you have to inquire at the church where they're buried. So, yeah, I think what I will do when... This is it's in Leicestershire. Lisa sends there's a guy opposite the cemetery in Downham. It's in Leicestershire. It's in Market Harbour. So I think what I will do is when we are allowed to go places with less worries about whether we're doing it right, I think I will go to Market Harbour and spend a night there and have a wander around all my old haunts and have a look at all the old and then probably cry a bit because because apparently I'm emotional these days. <laughs> and, um, Cried twice. What's this all about? <laughs> yeah, and maybe um, make some inquiries about what to do about it. Yeah. There we go. Karen says, my father-in-law was a stonemason and was well known for his work, and Darren can often tell which headstones he carved at the cemetery. That's quite, that's quite a thing, isn't it, to be able to go over there. There's my dad's work. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. What the hell is that? Strawberry pip. My grandparents have a wall with flowers on it. Hmm. I think I've seen that in one of your vlogs. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes I go and talk to grandpa. Hmm. And people people look at me weird. And I'm like, I'm just talking to my granddad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, it should have been done. It wasn't done. And one day I will sort it out. But I didn't realise that it was... I thought I, I had this idea that it might be many thousands. I didn't realize that I could do it for less thousands, you know? So that is something, like I said, I was something I would save up towards quite happily. Hmm. Hmm. So what are you thinking? Like, um, um, something like neon with lights on and, you know, yeah, I'm thinking of something. I mean, my 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 great grand lived to 103, and obviously she was very into the clubbing scene. And and, and so I'm thinking of yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of something understated and classic, actually. Lex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get in touch with the cemetery department at the council. They're they are local to. They'll get you the plot number. Yeah. So I know I know where the grave is, but obviously they don't just put numbers. I don't think do they? They must have a plan with the numbers on. They have things like it says like row E, row F, or whatever, doesn't it? Or stuff. I've got no idea. Yeah, and I said it's it's a while since I've been because it's a long way away, and I went the last time I went. Is my uncle John still alive? I don't think I've been for over ten years, so. Time to go then. Mm. Yes, I will look into that. There we go. This is gone. This is gone. This this Sunday morning chat goes in strange directions, doesn't it? It's because we're secretly dark people. Well, not even secretly. Yeah. <laughs> and because we ain't been shopping for a while. Well, that's it. Next week will be the last one of these in this style, because the week after that, it's going to be, I bought this and I got that and Lex got these and Lex is going to be going spikely, sparkly. And I go, but and who knows? But who knows? Because we may have to change time. Well, we will have to change time because like, don't know where we're going. Yeah, you the Easter Compton one is supposedly back on on the 18th, which means I will be back home by about 11-ish. Exactly. But where you'll be is anybody's guess. You can see. Hmm. 
Yeah, it, it's going to become a movable feast again, people. Those of you who've got used to this 10 o'clock start thing, it's going to become back the way it was before lockdown when it moved around. And But hopefully they'll all be out going like, yay, we're buying yeah. stuff. Dawn is asking, is burial more common than cremation in Britain? Not anymore. It certainly was, but um, we are at the point, I think, where we've we've swung the other direction. Now, there's, there is little room left in our graveyards. We are a small country. There are obviously rules about how many times you can dig up certain areas. And I know they do a thing where if a grave is more than so many years old, they can move the bones, put them with, respectfully, they can go, they can go and take the remains and and box them up and put them into a smaller place or whatever but i think it has to be hundreds of years old before they do that um and yeah cremation definitely more of a thing now definitely yeah in cardiff just off the haze there's a church there next to the owain glindor pub and uh there's like the the church grounds and then there's like a little sort of gardeny type bit um, and then there's like a cut through to get to Cardiff Market. And on the floor, there's little gold discs with numbers on. Never knew this before, but they're graves, like obviously centuries, centuries old, um, that obviously got moved when they were you know, making the haze, making like. Yeah. Yeah. So they just mark them with little like, gold. Oh, strawberries and raspberries. Yeah. That's it. Mummy going, going to a shop. Mum's going to Tesco. Do you want anything? Carla? Do you want out front Tesco? I think I'm all right, thanks, Mummy. I sent Anthony to Sainsbury's last night and he got the milk, so I think we're all right. Um, so we're going over my sister's later for dinner. Oh, family time and seeing people and stuff. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Like you're allowed indoors. Yeah, because she's bubble, isn't it? She's our oh, mom. of course. Yeah, I forgot she was your bubble. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, going to have some dinner and we're bringing dessert, which is basically going to be eating this. So, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. I've got to go and cook a chicken tagine because I didn't cook it yesterday because I was so knackered from climbing over rocks and stuff. Climbing over rocks? Yeah, we went off to Porter's Head and we went to a little beach that I didn't know about and it was all like rock, rock, climbing over rocks and scrambling and, and they took me down a cliffside and stuff like that, which was great fun. I filmed a bit of it. But um, but I came home and I was just like, I go to bed now, three o'clock. <laughs> I'm going to go to Porter's Head. Okay, well, when, you, when you're allowed to come and visit proper, we'll do that. Okay. I'm bowling. I'm bowling. And Nailsy. Is it Nailsy, the one Nailsy, I love? Yeah. 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 Kirsten, have you not got a bubble? You could have bubbled with a friend because surely you Yeah, you can you can yeah. Oh Panath is a nice place to be as well. Panath's lovely. The Nath. Right posh. I haven't, Tina. I've been around the Arnesville Cemetery, but I've never been on the tours. Oh, and and we're gonna go to to your Lido, aren't we? Yes, yeah. When, when it's warm, and and I think, like I said, I think we discovered you have to book in advance, didn't we? So, yeah. I definitely want to Lido. Yeah, we're planning. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's who somebody else who isn't it. Stall's not in this morning. Lazy bastard. Stall and Bad Wolf have stayed in bed together today. Start a rumour. No one will believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Start a rumour. Yeah, I need to go make a chicken tagine. And... Oh, I need to finish, finish, finish photo. I was going to say, I've got a whole list. I've got photos. Look, a tiny list. Photos and... Kill that fly and tagine and finish some boxes and do the uploads and bag and tag and put away and then tidy my bedroom. That's my list for Sunday. Nice. Mine is I'm going to hopefully, maybe, although I am a little bit scared, start making um a bit of jewellery today. Aid's in double karma. Aid was in earlier on. He was he was he was in when we were just discussing films and stuff. I don't know if he's still here. You're gonna start making jewellery when today? Yeah, I think so. I'm a little bit like apprehensive though, which is silly. 
but you know it is a bit because you know you can do it and furthermore you don't have to show anyone so if it goes wrong you can just melt it down well i am filming it though yeah but but you're not doing it live which means you do realize that things you film you can just delete no but like i don't want to be rubbish at it <laughs> but you could just delete it until you can film one where you're not rubbish at it no i want to be perfect first like i said i did not film the first exploding box because oh, okay. <laughs> it looked like it exploded <laughs> <laughs> Lynn's asking if you've got a stall locked upstairs. Uh, no, no, sadly not. No, we'd escape anyway. <laughs> um, oh, Karen's going to make something today. Put in your request for, for what you think Karen should make. Oven gloves. Oh, that's a good one. I don't know why my brain came up with that, but yeah, oven gloves. What do you put inside oven gloves to make them heat resistant? Um, like, I wonder if you bought an ironing board cover and cut that up whether you could use that mm -hmm. to line oven gloves yeah yeah could be I don't know hmm it always goes apart as the John's hmm? I I'm cold I've never been to um, Panath Charity Shopping. My hairdresser used to be there, but um, never actually, because Panath is posh. So I just presume that everything there is going to be expensive, but mm. should probably actually have a look at some point. But to get to Panath, it's like train into Cardiff and then train out to Panath. Right, There's a bit of a, you know, schlep. You know. Oh, see, Joan's saying that, that like, they're lush. Oh, I'm going to have to go, aren't I? Or oh, Carla, come down. We, I'll come and pick you up and we'll go to Penarth Charity Shops. When we, when, we, when, we, when we know for sure that I'm allowed into Wales and that things are open, we'll come. And the, and the, the state, because then I'll come back with you and then we do, yeah. Yeah, we'll, have a, we'll do a thing. We'll do a proper thing. But next Monday, I'm coming to Bristol and going. Yay! Better Hello. not. Wait, we're sat outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, we've got to sit outside. They've they've extended their outside seating area and they put a roof over it and they've got outdoor heaters. So they've, they've, they've done their best to make right. it palatable. But let's hope it's not snowing. I was going to say, better not. I'm going anyway. If I have to sit there in a Force 10 gale with, with me suit plate filling up with rain, I'm going anyway. <laughs> okay, good. So we're... Molly's never going on eBay, Lynn. Molly is my baby girl. Ah. <laughs> right. I am going to go and make a chicken tagine because I'm hungry now. I've had some breakfast. I've had breakfast. Mm -hmm. I had totally screwed up waffles. I forgot to spray the waffle maker so i had to literally scrape the waffle off of the waffle maker today <laughs> right i go sleep oh, it's because i'm cold good night. <laughs> <laughs> it's because i'm cold yeah good weather all over the country required for monday the 12th of april says heather <laughs> and heather is the weather so there we go. The weather. yeah yeah right everybody have i'm oh, sorry i've got bloody tickly molly hair now everybody have a lovely sunday um, whether you are religious or not, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, don't eat too much chocolate. Don't make yourself sick. Be sensible. You know, it's, it's nobody's going to steal it. Although in my eyes, probably. Or somebody's... also, fuck all of that and eat all of the chocolate. Well, don't blame me if you make yourself sick. Is what I'm saying. And um, have a good week. There will be waffle on Tuesday. Am I still fat on Thursday? <gasps> Spoilers. Um, something on Saturday, although I don't know what. You don't know what it is yet. I might get a facelift. <laughs> yes. On, on Saturday. Saturday. On Saturday, there might be just me with the Stanley knife just having a trim of the face. <laughs> Stanley knife and this in the needle and thread. No. What do you think? No. <laughs> God, no. Don't try this at home, children. Doing your own surgery, not advisable. Right. I'm off. Alexa, you vlogging daily? I don't vlog daily anymore. I've done that for ages. <laughs> I 
I'll, I'll do something this week, you know, at some point. Probably Tuesday. Yeah. Cool. Right, everybody have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye. Where's my hand? There it is. Awkward wave. Where's your hand? I was like, it was off screen. <laughs> I was like, bye, mm -hmm. waving off screen. Bye. <laughs>